across the state, 25,000 people in the state of New York every single day are pre-trial and legally innocent. Many are incarcerated simply because they cannot afford bail. No one should be locked up simply because they cannot afford bail. No one should wait months or years for trial. No one should be denied access to critical evidence about their case. When I was in college, I wound up being incarcerated and I was proven innocent. The worst part about that story is the fact that I wound up being incarcerated for two months and a half while I was in college, so I failed every single class due to the fact that I couldn't afford the bail of $25,000. For the honorable judge, I don't give a fuck. Bill, call the first case. Case number one, two, three, four. Johnson, approach the bench. I read your case, how do you plead? Not guilty. Not guilty? It was only half a day. Oh, you be quiet! We're gonna set his bail at $5,000. Can your client make that? No, he cannot. Then he'll be remanded to custody. No! No justice! One, two, three, four! What do we want bail reform? One, two, three, four! What do we want bail reform? As far as pre-trial, you, you have people sitting in jail for one, two, three years before even seeing a judge to be sentenced, you know? And that's just, that's against the law. And it mostly falls on the black and the Hispanic community. Daily, it's 1,200 people being locked up a day in Nassau County, daily. Myself alone, I've been in, incarcerated. Uh, $200,000 bills, $100,000 bills. Um, uh, and then, they, then they'll give you a bond, but it is still, it, it, you'll end up having to pay $10,000 cash and put up a home to bail out, you know? you know? And it's like when you're coming from where we come from, all of those resources are not available. You know, we're coming from the bottom. We, we're from Section 8 homes, you know? Like, we can't pay our own rent, let alone put up a house. Let's go! The judge asked me how much did I make every month. I said I make $695. Mm. But the judge said your bond will be a thousand over a thousand. That ain't right. I got arrested again in less than 60 days in front of the same judge for the same charge. This go round, the judge said your bond is 25 over 25. That ain't right. That ain't right. for something they did not do. That's right. We will not continue to let the system use us as ATM machines. I was in jail for two fucking weeks. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't afford that bill to get out. I didn't know when they were gonna call my name. I didn't know what was going on. Do you know what that do to you mentally? Mm. Women are incarcerated at a 30% higher rate than men right. in this country. I was arrested for standing up to an abusive partner. They had the evidence to prove that I was innocent. Mm. And they just let me sit in there. I ended up pleading guilty to something I wasn't guilty of. Just so I can get out and get back to my family, whatever that might look like. I was locked up for a very long time. They came to me a week into my jail term to tell me they were taking away my children. My youngest baby was taken from me at 11 months old. By the time I came out, it's okay. And when we say this is the residue that remains, we always say this is the residue. By the time I came out, my son didn't know who I was and I had to put his head to my chest so he could feel my heartbeat, just so he could remember that I'm his mother. Even after that, 
after I took the plea deal, I came out. I wasn't allowed to see my children for months and months and months and months where I had to do the research and see that they were rapists, murderers, uh, high felony offenders that actually were charged. Mind you, I was proven innocent. High felony offenders that were able to see their children with supervised visits within six months. I was a uh, ready-to-wear manager for an extremely high-end luxury company making $1,500 a week. And then after this entire storm went, I actually went down to making less than $300 a month. My name is Prince, I'm from Nassau County. I represent the Free New York Campaign. Yeah. I'm also the Community Outreach Coordinator for Network Support Services in the Bronx. I served 25 years to life. I just came home last year. Prior to that, 1992, I was held for a period of 24 months in incarceration in Suffolk County without bail. I had no disclosure as far as evidence that was in my favor that I could use at trial until the day of trial, but it was too late. So as a result of that, I was found guilty. They have what they call bullpen therapy. Yeah. During that 24-month period, I was an hour and a half away from home. I was going to court practically 17 times, only seeing the judge three times. Mm. It gets you so frustrated mm -hmm. and it's so draining on you that it forced you to play, plead guilty. Yeah. Even yeah. when you in, innocent. That's right. Yeah. So we gotta put a stop to this. I sat in Rackers Island for 18 months for a crime that I didn't commit. That ain't right. I sat in Rackers Island with a $75,000 bail, which I could not afford to pay. And they knew that. Yeah, they knew that. The case was dismissed. Yes. But the law states that once a case is dismissed, that you go back to living your life as it was before this. Well, I had to go to a shelter. Come on. I didn't have a pair of socks to put on. Bye. I didn't have a pair of underwear to put on. Bye. So how did I go back to a life that I had before that happened? That's right. Now, the prosecutor in my case started out with a three-count indictment Ooh. that she ballooned to a 15-count indictment. Now, I'm 60 now. When this happened, I was 58 years old. They were trying to give me a death sentence because I wasn't going to take anything. When you get out and you walk down the street, you fear that a cop might stop you and pick you up and lock you up again for something you didn't do. That's right. Okay? It never leaves your mind what has happened to you. People just look at the logistics of being locked up, but what about the after effect? It still lingers is in my mind to this day. I still can't sleep a whole night. Residue. Residue. And I know I'm not the only one that's like that. It's like a legalized form of slavery. Even the way the Rikers Island barge is set up, it's set up like a slave boat. The way you sleep, everything. If you think about it, minimum wage now is what, $9 in America, I think, to maybe 10, it's supposed to be going to 15. Um, you get paid, I, I remember getting paid $15 for two weeks of work. $15, that's worth, I mean, if you think about it, there are people in sweatshops in, country, in, in third world countries that are getting paid more than that, you know? And we're forced to work. It's work or go to the box. You see what I'm saying? Or be in solitary confinement. They have jails where they press license plates. They have jails where they build a classroom furniture. You know, things that's really, literally feeding the America and helping it to grow. You know, and they're getting paid 13, 14 cents an hour. You know, and it's majority black. The one thing that separates us today from slavery of yesteryear is one thing. And that one thing is the amendment that tells us that slavery is abolished except in the case of criminal punishment. This is a reverse slavery. They try to play with our minds and put us back in bondage. And what they use in order to do that are the tools of government. We cannot say that the United States is the land of the free. That's right. If we have more people in jail than slaves back in the slavery time. the land of the free if we have more people restricted from their voting rights mm. even before the civil rights movement Come on. because of this the, the criminal justice system That's right. I'm a dreamer yes. That's right. That's and I can tell you that the latest attack on our immigrant community yes. runs parallel to the criminalization of our black and brown communities yes.
I'm not gonna tell you how devastating it is to go through a deportation. We know. It's the same experience when you take somebody, when you take your son, when you take your daughter, your mom, your sister, your brother, and you put him in jail. Yes. It's the same feeling. Two young black boys were killed because they was afraid to go to jail. One was a stop and frisk, one was a traffic stop. And all of them involved weed. If they were to go to jail, they feared that more than anything. Those cops, they're still on the police force. With a promotion, they killing us out here in Buffalo. And it's not only Buffalo, it's us everywhere. India Cummings was uh, murdered uh, inside of the Erie County Holding Center after she called for uh, help. She was going through something mental that she needed help with. She asked for an ambulance. Two officers showed up. It must not have been inviting because she fled them. They eventually arrest her. They didn't take her to the hospital. They take her to Erie County Holding Center. They beat her. She went to cardiac arrest. They shipped her to the hospital. For three days, she was on life support. So she was already dead when she left the Erie County Holding Center. This woman had no prior charges ever. Uh, she'd never been in trouble. I graduated with her. I knew her on a social, on a friend's level. She was actually someone that was a mentor to me. There are hundreds of thousands of people who have died at the hands of the state in county jails. They want to lock us up, but that's not safe either. We are sick and tired of being in a space where we continue to have to hold up posters of lost sisters and brothers yes. who have had their lives taken from them yes. purely and simply because of a racist, sexist, misogynistic yes. system that's repeatedly yes. against us. We reject this. We don't allow for this. We, we will not, will not.